Here we'll discuss area functions and the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the idea is if we have some kind of curve, we want to consider the area under the curve from a starting point A to an unknown point X. Then we can get the area function. This is given by A of X equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt, where my graph is the function f of t. This works for any number you give for x. So if we just use the general variable x as my upper limit of my integration, then in that case we actually get a formula for the area. So x is independent of the actual graph. You'll notice my graph is in terms of t. It's the variable of integration. t is also called a dummy variable because we're kind of just using it in a, as a placeholder and then we'll end in terms of x. In addition, it's really important to note that your function f has to be continuous for this to work. So we do need a continuous function at least between the points a and x. Also, if your graph ever moves below the x-axis, then we consider this a negative area. Above the x-axis, like I have in this picture, it's going to be a positive area, and below the x-axis is negative area. So now let's see about doing some examples. Our first example, we're going to let a of x be equal to the integral from 0 to x of 3t squared plus 4t minus 3dt, and we want to find a of 2. So all I'm going to do is change the upper bound on this integral to a 2. So now I have the integral from 3 to 2, or from 0 to 2, of 3t squared plus 4t minus 3dt. Whenever we integrate, we add 1 to the exponent and divide. So our first term would be t cubed. Adding 1 to the exponent and dividing would give us 2t squared. And the integral of a constant is that constant times t, so 3t. And we need to take this between 0 and 2. So we stick in the upper bound, 2 cubed, plus 2 times 2 squared, minus 3 times 2, minus sticking in the lower bound, 0 cubed, plus 2 times 0 squared, minus 3 times 0. And if we work this out, we get 10. So the area of this function, 3t squared plus 4t minus 3, from 0 to 2 is 10. For our next example, we have the same function. However, this time we want to find a of 7. So I'm going to integrate between 0 and 7 of 3t squared plus 4t minus 3 dt. Our initial integration works the same way. We still get t cubed plus 2t squared minus 3t. The only difference is our bounds. This time we're going between 3 and 7, or 0 and 7. So I have 7 cubed plus 2 times 7 squared minus 3 times 7 minus sticking in 0, which we can see from our last example. And then looking at this example is just going to be 0. When we work this one out, we get 420. So our area between 0 and 7 will be 420 units. For our next example, I have the same function I had before, but this time I'm going to try to find a general formula for a of x. So we're going to integrate the same way we have been doing. We'll still get t cubed plus 2t squared minus 3, but this time we're going to go between 0 and x. When I stick in x, I get x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus sticking in the lower limit, which is just 0. So my area is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. So no matter what my right-hand bound is, if I want to find the area starting at 0, I now have this general formula. And this is an example that essentially kind of demonstrates the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, which we'll now state more formally and talk about a little more. 
There are two parts to the fundamental theorem of calculus, but we're just going to discuss the first part here. So to start with, we need our function f to be continuous. It doesn't have to be continuous everywhere, just on some interval a to b. Then we can define our area function the same way we did previously. And we can now definitively say, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, that this is the area function for any value of x between a and b. In addition, this gives us a little more. The area function also has to be continuous and differentiable. So not only do we have that this area function exists and is defined the way we were using previously, but the area function is also continuous and differentiable. And we can also say a little bit more. Not only is it differentiable, but the derivative is actually equal to our original function. Another way to say that is the derivative of a, a prime of x, is d dx, the integral from a to x of f of t dt, which is equal to f of x. Now that's a lot of formulas and may be a little bit strange, but essentially what this is saying is that the area function is the antiderivative. The antiderivative and the area under the curve are in fact the exact same thing. And that's all this is saying. It's also saying that the derivative and the integral are opposites of each other, so if you try to take the derivative of the integral, they cancel each other out. So this is actually saying a lot, and we were using this in our last example, but this is now the formal statement that essentially the area function and the antiderivative are the exact same thing.